Hey there friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today we're going to look at Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, as played by Willie Nelson on his 1975 classic album, The Red-Headed Stranger. So uh, let's jump on in. Uh, I want to start off showing you just the three chord version of this song, right? The E, the A, and the B7, right? This B7 is a simpler way to play this song. Willie uses a regular B major right here. You can use that if you want, but unless you're really comfortable with that, I find that the B7 is easier to play. It's a lot more beginner-friendly. It's also going to get you a lot of mind with this sort of genre of song. Lots of country tunes from Willie or Waylon or Johnny Cash are gonna use that chord. It's a great cowboy chord to learn. So check out these three chords, the E, the A, the B7, second, first, second, open, second, okay? I have a separate a lesson teaching these chords in detail and also teaching you how to walk up and down between these chords, which is something we're actually gonna use a little bit later in this lesson. So if you're a member on my Patreon page, the link will be in the description of this post. You can get that video lesson and that PDF to download there, right? So get comfortable with these chords. And then if you wanted to play this song just with these chords, you could basically go through and just play it freely, like do a single strum just in my chord sheet where it says, you know, in the twilight glow I see her a single strum wherever you see the chord right blue eyes crying in the rain so the verse is just E to B7 and back to E uh, when we kissed goodbye and parted I knew we'd never meet again then you're gonna to go to the chorus, and the chorus is super similar to the verse, but you just have this one line where you stay on A, and it start, goes like this. Love is like a dying ember. Right? And then back to E. Only memories remain. And the last part of the chorus is basically the same thing as a verse, just E to B7, back to E. And through the ages I'll remember. Eyes crying in the rain. Okay, and that's all you're gonna need for this song. If you want the simplest version, you can do that. Take your time with the strumming. You don't have to strum at all, just play the changes, take it slow. Don't worry about a tempo yet. Just try to work on those clean chord changes, right? Take your time with them, practice switching between them so you can play them cleanly. Give it some time and practice if you're getting started, okay? And that's all you'll need to get started. It'll give you a sense of the two sections, the verse and the chorus. I have the chord progression and everything mapped out in my song sheet if you pick that up. Now, from there, let's dial it up a little bit because there's all kinds of ways we can sort of add the subtlety and the nuance, right? The, the cool hammer on in the intro, right? I'll talk about this. I'm also gonna talk about the walk-ups and walk-downs. Nice way to connect the chords, right? Willie does this all the time. And the next thing I would talk about is strumming. Let's bring in some strumming and give a real sense of rhythm to this thing. So the easiest strum that I would recommend getting started with is just doing a bass note and then a down strum, right? If you mapped it out to the four counts per measure, it could look like this. Bass, down, bass, down, bass, down, bass, down. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now you could do this with every chord, okay? Getting that bass note cleanly played can be a bit tricky at first, but it's a great skill to have. You're gonna use it in all kinds of songs. So practice sort of just going between the chords freely. You don't need to necessarily worry about the order of the chords in the song just yet. Just get your E and your A and your B7 really comfortable there. For the B7 and the A, that bass note's gonna be on the fifth string. So that's a little bit trickier because you have to sort of skip the sixth string. You don't want to come down and hit the sixth string when you're playing the B7 or the A. But you could play the entire song like that, right? You could uh, look at my chord progression mapping right here. You see every measure has four counts. And if you just did the bass down, bass down, you could play things like that as well. So let's look at the intro. In uh, the verse, I'm sorry. In the twilight glow I see her. B7's next. Blue eyes crying in the rain. And if you want to sort of practice with staying in time, I do have a backing track. It's attached to my Patreon post. The link is in the description. It gives you basically this nice slowed down version. It's 20% slower than Willie's version. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When we kissed goodbye and parted. One, two, B7's next. I knew we'd never meet again. Here comes the chorus. Love is like a dying ember. And 
back to the E and the B7. And only memories remain. You get the idea, right? Again, that's available to you. I find it nicer to use that sort of drums with a bit of a swing to it. It captures the, the subtle feel of, of Willie's version. I don't think Willie even has drums on his. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, that's available to you if you want something to practice along with. I'll come back to that later. Now, I would recommend you know spending some time with that. Once you get comfortable with the chords and the chord changes, bring in that bass note strum, bass note strum, right? It's gonna sort of get you the first uh, big step that you're gonna need to really dial it up. And then the next version I wanna talk about is alternating bass notes. This is where you really are gonna sort of capture that cowboy sound. The idea here is on the one and the three count that we were just playing, we're not gonna just stay on the bass note the whole time, on the lowest string of the chord. We're gonna jump between strings. So for the E, it's going to look like this. Now I'm skipping the up strums here. I'm just going between the sixth string and the fifth string. The B7, we'll jump to the B7 here, is going to go between the fifth string and the sixth string, but I'm gonna use my left middle finger to do both, okay? So basically, B7, back to E. I think the E and the B7 are the ones you want to practice the most because you're going between those the most. The A is a lot more rare in this song, right? So this is your E. When you go to the B7, notice how your left middle finger is just staying on that second fret of the fifth string. Just keep it there, right? It makes the switching a lot easier. So here's your E, sixth string, and fifth string to the B7. Back to the E. And then even the A, right? Fifth string and sixth string again. One, two, three, four. Whatever tempo you play, this is the idea. One, two, three, four. One, two. Now, when you get comfortable with this, what you can do is bring in the up strums, okay? And the up strums are gonna happen on the and count just after the two and just after the four. And the way to think of it is like this. If you're doing this version that I just showed you, your hand is already coming up anyway to get the pick and position for the next strum. So all you want to do is when it's coming up, just kind of like, you know, kind of like Maximus dragging the, his hand on the wheat fields in the beginning of Gladiator. It's like that. You want to just lightly brush the thinnest couple strings. You don't need to do a full up strum of all the strings. Just graze this, the thinnest, even two strings. That's going to be a, how, all you need. This is what that could sound like. One, two, and three, four, and one. the B7, back to the E. If you miss the bass note, just keep going. I think it's better to keep a tempo, steady tempo, even if you have a little fumble. Because you can always sort of get it your next round, right? And a light touch is probably another really important thing. Back to the A, and then the E. Let me do a quick playthrough of just the verse and everything like that. Uh, we'll take it nice and slow for you, okay? so. In the twilight glow I see her Blue eyes crying in the rain When we kissed goodbye and parted I knew Meet again. And I'll just do the A really quick in the chorus. Love is like a dying ember. Here's my Coulter Wall voice. And only memories remain. So this takes some time to get comfortable with, especially if it's your first time learning it, but spend the time because it really is just, it's a fun sort of meditative groove to fall into. And it does require that precision of the fifth and sixth string. Uh, you do wanna make sure you get light up strums and also just getting that light feel, that light brushy, easy going feel is gonna be something that takes time to get to, but give it time, give it practice, come back to it a few days in a row, even longer. Get my song sheet to follow along, all the tabs are here and everything, okay? But that's gonna be the sort of next thing to give you the power you need. Now, from here, a couple things. The intro riff, really quick what he's doing, it's just what I showed you on the E, 
right? Going between sixth and fifth string. But here's the deal. He is starting on the fifth string in the intro, and then he does his hammer on. On the fifth string second fret. He plays it open, and he hammers on his left middle finger. So it's... I'm muffling it there. And he only does it uh, twice before he gets into the actual verse, so it's kind of not something you hear throughout the song necessarily, but it's a nice little Willie touch you can add, okay? Now, uh, the next big thing to really get this to Willie's sort of vibe is these walk-ups and walk-downs. Now, these are going to happen in the verse and in the chorus, and they're going to happen whenever you're switching chords, almost every time. There's a few switches where you don't do a walk-up and walk-down, but the idea is you have these bass notes that are going to carry you, uh, sort of connect between one scale and the other. So, or one chord and the other, I'm sorry. So the first of these, there's two walk-ups, is gonna be going between the E and the B7. And we were gonna go basically... So the two walk-up notes are the open fifth string, first fret fifth string, and then we resume the B7 as normal with our uh, left middle finger on the second fret of the fifth string. That's the first thing to practice, it's just those two golden notes, and then put your left middle finger down for the B7, and then get your left hand in the B7 position. That's an important part. You gotta do the walk up, but then you have to execute the chord. So it's good to practice them together, okay? Now in context, that's gonna sound like this. All right, let's look at In the twilight glow I see her Blue eyes crying in the rain. And then you're going to do it again, second half of the verse. And when we kissed goodbye and parted. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is going to be at the end of the verse. I knew we'd never meet again. Okay, this is a four note walk up, all on the sixth string, open, first, second, fourth, and then you're gonna end on open A string, and you're gonna resume the A strum. Uh, uh, love is like a dying. So, one, two, set, one, zero, one, two, four. Okay, now you could do this all with one finger, or you could, you could use three fingers if you want. Right? Doesn't really matter. I think um, if you want to embrace the williness of it, you could. You could do a little bit of vibrato when you're doing those. You could do the slides. Uh, take it as you want it. He kind of does it a bit easy going in this song. If you lo watch, uh, listen to him play Angel Flying Too Close to the Ground, these exact same walk ups are in that song, but with those, he's spacing them out over twice as many beats, so he's. He's really like emphasizing the dramaticness of them. So I would just keep them simple if you want a simple version. And then just practice getting your hand in that A major shape, right? So for context, I knew we'd never meet again. Love is like a dying ember. All right, um, now we got some walk downs and those are gonna be both in the chorus. So the first walk down is from the A down to an E. And all we're gonna do is fourth fret, second fret, open on the all on the sixth string. So we're on A. Love is like a dying ember. Only memories remain. And then here's our second walk down. going from the B7 to the E, okay? Second to open on the fifth string, and then fourth to second to open on the sixth string. So a lot of these notes are repeating. You're probably starting to notice here. With this B7 walk down, if you want to get fancy pants, you can do a... That first note, you can hammer on and then repeat the note. So for context, that would look like this. Oh. Ooh. Okay, 
little bit tricky there. Just master the simple version first. Second, open, fourth, second, open. Okay, so that's gonna be something you're gonna use throughout this song. On page one of my song sheet, I have these all written in exactly where they happen. And then on page four of my song sheet, I have the tabs for the entire verse and entire chorus with these included along with the alternating bass notes. So it's a real great way to follow along with this. And then now let me talk about one other thing Willie does, which is these quick changes. I don't know if they're called punches or whatever of some chords that he does in the verse and in the chorus. And effectively he's gonna do a single strum of A during the chorus. It's gonna be in the twilight glow I see Eyes crying in the rain. Here comes another one. Ready? Da -da -da -da. When we kissed goodbye and parted. So he's basically just doing a single strum on that four count and then back to the regular alternating bass note, okay? He also does it in the chorus when he's going to the D. Uh, I'm sorry, he's on the A, so. Love is like a dying ember But only memories remain. So um, that's something you're gonna do uh, throughout this song. It's optional though, and as I have it noted in my song sheet, um, I have it in parentheses because I don't think you need to do it, number one. It's optional number two, those are kind of the same thing. And number three, it's only happening for that one quarter note, right? It's not many measures of this. So that's why I wanted to use a parenthesis so you're not confusing these chords for those other chords that you're staying on for a lot longer. I have it in my chord progression right up as well. So uh, no matter what visual kind of learner you are, hopefully you got, got you covered there. Hey y'all, thanks for watching this lesson so far. If you wanna get the extended version of this lesson, it's over on my Patreon page. You can get the link in the description of this video. I'm gonna talk about the solo, show you some different ways to play that that are a bit easier easier than Willie Nelson's version. also do a playthrough of the entire song uh, along with my backing track just so you can hear that and of course you will get the backing track on patreon as well in addition to all my other members only content so thank you very much for watching this far i um, if you're interested uh, please support my lessons it keeps them coming these don't create themselves it's a lot of work but it is my true passion to make these for y'all and i have the deepest thanks for all of you who are active members and supporting me um, week to week month to month year to year so thank you so much and i'll see y'all in the next one Bye bye